Hi, thank you so much for registering for this webinar. My name is Amanda Merck. I'm with Salute America at UC Health in San Antonio. And here with me, I have Diana Centeno with San Antonio Independent School District. And then on the line, we also have Andrea Dar with the West Virginia Center for Children's Justice. Uh, thank you all so much for joining in. This webinar today is about our action pack. So we're gonna kind of go through why this program is really important and then the action pack that we created to help you start the Handle with Care program in your school or community. So Salute America is a national organization and we share multimedia content to help build awareness and self-efficacy to implement change in your schools and your communities to improve Latino health. And the Handle with Care program was launched through West Virginia's Children's Justice Task Force. Um, and they first piloted this program back in 2013 to help build collaboration and communication between police and schools to notify schools if a child is at the scene of an incident so that teachers are prepared to provide support and help those kids in class the next day. And so some of the reasons this is an important topic for us and why it's connected to health in general, um, we're gonna discuss all of that and then we'll discuss the Handle With Care program um, and then we'll discuss the action pack. So first, why we're even talking about this, why police, schools, mental health care providers should care about trauma. Um, and then actually real quick, I didn't, I didn't do any housekeeping, but if you have any questions or comments along the way, feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, I will keep an eye on them as we go. In case I don't get to them, we will definitely have time at the end for questions and comments. So feel free to add them into the chat box. Okay, so nationwide about six in 10 children are exposed to violence, crime, abuse, or other overwhelming experiences. And it's common for some kids to even experience more than one. If you think about um, substance abuse, for example, that increases risk for domestic violence, for maltreatment, parent incarceration. And so right there, you're looking at four adverse childhood experiences that these kids are facing. And the reason this is a big issue is adverse childhood experiences impact the child's brain and body. Uh, it impairs social, emotional, cognitive development. It weakens the ability to regulate emotion and manage impulse control. So you can imagine how that manifests in the classroom. It also disrupts the development of organs, the circulatory system, immune system, and inflammatory response system. And it's linked to a lot of chronic health problems later on in life. So right away, it's linked to issues in behavior, and then long-term, it's linked to some health complications. And with um, early behavioral problems manifesting in the school, these can look as misbehavior, so it can lead to behavioral consequences, um, sometimes harsh behavioral consequences, ex expulsions, suspensions. And then these kids are more likely to drop out of high school. They're more likely to engage in risky behavior. And all of those compound to increase their risk for additional adversity uh, and health complications later in life. And with engagement in riskier behaviors, this is where law enforcement will kind of see how it manifests in more children being involved in the juvenile justice system, um, more kids missing school, dropping out of school. And when kids are exposed to these events at home or in their community, they're often coming to school the next day and they're, they're tired, they're hungry, they're not prepared maybe for tests, they're not prepared with their homework or maybe um, permission slips, um, and they're probably kind of on the verge of an outburst. So it's important to think if, if these kids are experiencing these events outside of school, they're coming to school, they're bringing that that toxic stress with them, that, that toxic stress response with them. And so how are these school leaders responding? Um, because trauma does, it turns off the learning switch for these kids um, because they're tired, because they're hungry. 
they're less able to focus in class, they're more likely to experience uh, discipline or consequences, uh, it decreases their reading ability, impairs cognitive function, and then they're falling behind in school, it's further harder for them to catch up, uh, they're missing school, they have higher rates of dropping out of school, and so teachers need to kind of be ready and prepared uh, for when these kids walk through their doors. And one, um, so these are a few other ways that the behavior can manifest in the classroom um, that, that teachers will see, or even in early child care settings, uh, reactivity, imp impulsivity, aggression, defiance, uh, withdrawal, that perfectionism. The thing about early childhood adversity and that toxic stress response is kids can react differently. Um, depending on maybe not even necessarily the severity of the trauma itself, but the individual child, depending on their age. There's um, a lot of people are familiar with that fight, flight, or freeze response. Um, and this is kind of what it can look like in the classroom and how it can, uh, that's where it can kind of turn off that learning switch. So I'm gonna pass it over to Andrea Dar, and she's gonna go over this program that was first piloted in 2013 to support these kids who were experiencing adverse childhood experiences. Okay, so over to Andrea. Thank you, Amanda. Um, that was a great introduction for Handle with Care and why we have Handle with Care. Handle with Care is about helping children succeed to the very best of their ability every day at school. We, research tells us that, that trauma does turn off that learning switch and it affects their behaviors and their ability to learn. So Handle with Care was designed for that. Handle with Care is a program, <clears throat> it, it's a three-part program where um, it enables law enforcement at the scene when they encounter children to be able to send a little quick notification over to the school to let them know that um, this child was on the scene of a police incident and might have problems the next day. We first piloted this program um, in Charleston in 2015. If we could click ahead, there we go. In 2015, uh, we, we started developing that a couple years beforehand, but we piloted in 2015 after we had decided what the program looked like, named the program, ran it by all our supervisors, lawyers, bosses, everybody. We got the okay to do it. So we launched it in an area that had a lot of crime in Charleston. You know, that was the busiest law enforcement car right there where the school is. And so uh, we thought, well, if we pilot it here, we can see how it might work and what the outcomes might be. They loved it. It is so helpful for teachers to be able to be proactive instead of reactive um, with those children the next day. Once we piloted in 2015, we, um, we got to all 55 counties within the next two years, and now we're in 27 different states across the country. This whole, this whole program was just put into our work plan. It didn't have a funding stream, but it's so smart and it helps so many children. It just spread like wildfire across the country. But, so the police are gonna send that heads up, and you have to remember in the past, when police are on the scene and their children present, it's there's a child that meets that criteria for a mandated report, that law enforcement officer is going to do that so those children are identified and get services. But what about the rest of those kids? That's what we're looking at. All the kids that are left that have witnessed, it can be as small as a, a search warrant, it could be a domestic, it could be a drug buy, it could be whatever. The majority of these children <clears throat> are not identified and get no services, but that's what we're doing. We're getting a little notice and we're gonna send it over to the school and it's gonna say, it's on our website, by the way, handlewithcarewv.org. There's a little sample notification and it says, if you're getting this notice on little Johnny, they've been on the scene of a police incident in the last 24 hours, might exhibit academic, emotional, or behavioral problems. Please handle this child with care. Um, and for more information, go to handlewithcarewv.org. When we first started this, even teachers who were not aware of the program were receiving notices and figured out what they need to do. And it's not rocket science. It's a lot of empathy. It's safety. It's predictability. So um, for law enforcement, um, 
to get the training about what it is, we created this Handle With Care roll call video. It's on our website under Handle With Care for Law Enforcement. It's six and a half minutes. It's a perfect way for all law enforcement to get that overview of Handle With Care at their roll call. So please feel free to access that and check that out. And if you're trying to share this program with people in your community, that's a great way to do that as well. So the first part of our program is the Handle With Care Notice. Um, but that's only one part of a three-part program. A lot of people think it's just a notice, but it's so much more than that. It's not okay to identify a child and not be ready to do something to help that child. So the second part is schools becoming trauma, <clears throat> creating trauma-sensitive environments for these kids. Um, and on our, again, on our website, there are, we have two, all our work is based on the research and evaluation from Massachusetts Advocates for Children, helping traumatized children learn. So I just wanna say that up front and on our website are, are presentations that um, you can use to, to create trauma-sensitive schools. But when we're talking about schools, once it, the notification hits the point person at the school, it's gonna to go to the principal and only to the teacher that works with that child and the counselor. It's not for everybody's business at the school. It's only going to the people that actually work with those children. And all you're ever going to get are three words, handle with care. You get no details whatsoever. It's not our business. Our business is helping that child learn and succeed at school. So once the notice hits the school, once it gets to the teacher, it doesn't mean that everyone's going to pounce on that kid that day. It just means they're going to be silent observers and be aware of what trauma is and what they can do to mitigate those negative effects. For instance, a little five, fifth grader comes to school disheveled, has a hard time staying on task usually. So he comes to school, um, he doesn't have his homework, he, he gets a zero. He uh, falls asleep in class, he loses his recess. He gets into a scuffle at lunch because he's had a bad day and he gets detention. And they have a field trip in the afternoon and no one signed his permission slip, so he doesn't get to go. Let's turn this all around and do this with a handle with care notification. He comes to school, teacher gets handle with care, she's ready to be proactive instead of reactive. So he doesn't have his homework and she offers extra time and some one-on-one -on -one help. Falls asleep in class, sends him to the nurse's office. Let him sleep in the morning, feed him, wake him up at lunch and feed him and bring him back in the classroom in the afternoon. Why lose the whole day when you can just meet his needs and bring him back into the classroom? The child didn't get into a scuffle at lunch because they didn't have that bad a day after having a horrendous night. So he received care and love and help. The teacher also made a, a phone call and got verbal permission over the phone so the child didn't have to skip out on that field trip. So these are, this is sort of a, a little example of how Handle With Care works. But the basics of what kids need, it's real simple. Food, sleep, clean clothes, safe, predictable, supportive environments, connection to a caring adult, empowerment for self-confidence. A lot of these kids feel so bad about themselves and every kid is good at something. Let's figure out what they're good at and applaud it and help them build that self-confidence. Again, on our website, school training, there are two book studies. We, these are the books that the Trauma Learning Institute created. And so uh, we took them with their permission and made a book study. It's a little PowerPoint on our website that all schools can use. It has everything you need in those books of, to know about trauma and what they can do to create trauma-sensitive environments. The third part of our program is very important. It's mental health providers on scene to provide therapy on site. Uh, a lot of people say, but we have counselors at school. Why do we need therapists? Counselors have a lot of collateral duties and they can do a lot of crisis intervention, but we want therapists on site. We ask schools, please get free space for a therapist to set up. And we want therapy services on site during the school day. Parents don't get their kids to appointments for a lot of reasons. Some are working two or three jobs to pay the bills. Transportation's an issue here in West Virginia, and I'm sure in other states it's very rural, and a lot of times drugs are the issue, the priority in the home, and not getting those kids to appointments. We're not even gonna go there. We just want services available to the kids on site. 90% of little school interventions can help these kids. You know, I told you, it's food, it's sleep, it's safe, predictable environments. A lot of that can take care of a lot of the needs but probably about 10% of these kids really need to talk to a therapist. So we want that on site. That's our uh, mental health 
clinic at Mary C. Snow, and the inmates at Mount Olive made all that furniture and created all that for the therapist to use with those kids. And they said, we never thought we could help a kid from inside these walls, but they did. Um, so here's a map where we are in the United States. If it's blue, they have active programs. If it's purple, they're in the development phase. And if it's yellow, then we've had a lot of interest. But we just kind of Google and watch and get calls from everyone around the country and are so thrilled that Handle with Care is spreading far and wide and helping so many children. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Amanda. Hi. Hey, hey yeah, sorry. Thank you so much, Andrea. And um, I wanted to share a pilot program. So that map that showed um, active Handle with Care programs across the country uh, we did a case study on three districts here in San Antonio that piloted this program um, just this last uh, spring. Um, so this is the link to that case story, case study and Fluid Hero video if you want to read about that. But then Diana here is going to help explain um, kind of how she got involved, how they got this program going in San Antonio and how it does look a little bit different across each of the three school districts. Hello, I am Diana Centeno, as Amanda said, and I work with San Antonio ISD. And I came in contact with Officer Green in trying to establish law enforcement relationships with our children in our schools and to build that positive rapport. And a colleague from Community and Schools mentioned Handle with Care. And upon reading up on it, I thought it was a great program that would definitely benefit our students. In speaking with Officer Green, he too felt that it was a great program, and we both decided to look on each end. He went into the law enforcement side, and I went into the district side to see what it would look like in our district. Um, I had to do a lot of research, and I had to really speak to a lot of the leadership. And with anything new, there's definitely hesitation. I think the biggest concern was confidentiality for us. Um, but in reviewing what West Virginia had done, we saw that confidentiality was definitely protected. Officer Green, on his end, he started with, you know, he went from the officers to all the other uh, way up to the brass to see what it would look like on their end and how difficult it would be for them to implement. Um, coming together, we said we definitely can do it at a school district. He felt he could do it in the law enforcement. But his was East Patrol Service Unit, which would be training all of the officers in that unit. And not only do those officers service SAISD um, attendance zone, they also service Northeast ISD as well as East Central. So it only made sense to include the other two into this pilot that we decided to do. In San Antonio ISD, we had 28 schools that were piloted. And on our, our end, I was really um, blessed to have Lieutenant White on my corner with our campus police and assisted with the dispatch. So when we get notifications, the notifications are forwarded overnight. When the dispatch is able to receive them overnight, they forward them to the campuses. And that's how we did it in SAISD. Um, as far as the training, as um, it was mentioned that our counselors are tasked with many other duties and they're not able to service our children that have these prolonged trauma exposures that require a lot of attention. So therefore, we decided to train all of the professionals on the campuses with the modules of UT Teen, which is a trauma-informed care. There are four modules. We mandated two. Um, they're 20-minute modules, and each module, are, they're free, they're online, uh, and they get a certificate upon completion. And it's a very basic information on what to do with a child that has been um, had received a, a handle with care notification and it's just a lot of empathy and it, a lot of it is people say it's common sense unfortunately with our teachers and the academic rigor that is such a for, uh, forefront and very important it's often put the other things are often put on the back burner and with a handle with care notifications it just helps us bring it back to the forefront and just make everyone aware and to be much more proactive in servicing the students. And as previously stated, um, the children come in that they're hungry, they're tired, uh, and instead of sending them to the Office for Disciplinary Measures, we definitely would send them out to the counselor or a social worker. Our district is blessed to have social workers that work very closely with all of our counselors 
and are able to provide more intense um, therapy and counseling sessions for our students. And it does look different. Um, in one of the other districts, uh, they already had a similar component of addressing the trauma the children were coming to. They were missing the law enforcement component. So this worked out beautifully into their, their um, district. And as far as the other district, they too, we all started from the ground. It was not all that difficult to get it together once we were able to come together and collaborate. And we all share and support one another. And to this date, it's been really great. We are now expanding from the pilot program. It is now going citywide, San Antonio wide, and it is going to include Bear County wide as well to include charter schools and private schools that wish to join our program. And with that expansion, now SAPD, uh, San Antonio Police Department, as well as the Bear County Sheriff's Department and the San Antonio Fire Department will also be providing us notifications of the Handle With Care. This is also critical in properly servicing our McKinney-Vento students that have been displaced due to fires in the homes and to help us identify the students that need more wraparound services. Wow, that's so exciting that it will be expanding across the city soon. Yeah. Uh, I did want to ask, how many notifications did the three districts receive when they first piloted this? It's very slow coming because it depends on the, um, the training of the officers. Some of the officers go in and say, well, I don't know if that is. And one of the things Officer Green has done a wonderful job in saying, when in doubt, send the notification. Um, that is really critical. For our district, we had received 22 notifications that have impacted over 35 children. And we began in January. And to this date, that's what the numbers are as of now. But we can see that it's definitely starting to pick up. The numbers are starting to come through as more and more of the officers are being trained and are being told what to look for. Um, one of the learning curves for us is that we continue to receive the Handle With Care notifications over the summer. So it's important to think about that. And that was a learning curve for us as most counselors in for the summer, you know, early June, where we have summer school that is going on year round. Um, and then we have children that are not in summer school, but we're getting notifications. So that's something that we're tweaking and trying to make sure that we, uh, no families fall through the cracks. Wow, yeah. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much for kind of explaining some of that. So at Salute America, um, we worked with Andrea Dar to put a lot of the resources and videos and documents that they already had to help schools and law enforcement work together to bring Handle With Care to their community. And we put everything together in this action pack and we kind of turn it into five steps. Um, and this is really what we're launching today. This is what we want to share with everyone today. It's completely free. This is the uh, link down at the bottom of this slide. So the five steps are, one is to start the conversation, um, use the content in the action pack to begin conversations with stakeholders, and then create a group and a vision. Bring some of these key, passionate people together to get the ball moving and bring this program to life. Um, creating that notification flow. So within the school district, working with law enforcement to create how exactly you want that notification to come via text or phone call or email, and then implementing the Handle With Care program. So this comes to kind of training law enforcement, bringing them up to date on the new system, but also uh, raising awareness about childhood trauma and how it impacts learning, uh, risky behavior, and health. Um, and then also training schools and mental health. And then the fifth step is promoting the program. We created some social media messages and graphics to help raise awareness about what you're doing in your community. So for example, in the step one, to begin conversations with stakeholders, we created some uh, frequently asked questions, as well as model emails. So you kind of have the language ready. You can send that email to key decision makers within the school, within the law enforcement, or um, mental health partners. A two-pager fact sheet with uh, out with um, flow of how the notification kind of works from police to schools 
for teachers and counselors to have an eye on the student and then maybe how they can send them to the counselor, to the nurse, and then mental health if needed. And then also the case study and flu hero video. We also created some talking points. So these are just sort of these bite-sized um, talking uh, points, which you can include in an email, you can include in social media messaging, or you can include um, on the phone to help raise awareness about childhood trauma, the concerns, the lasting impacts, but then also to explain the program um, quickly and concisely. So for example, this is a screenshot of part of one of the one pagers. Um, so we try to make it really colorful using that multimedia uh, to get the information out there. And then for step two, to create this group and a vision, we, thanks to all the work that um, Andrea Jar and her team has already done with the Handle With Care program, is we created a sample stakeholder list so you have an idea of who some of the people are in your community that you need to invite to this big meeting, a sample invitation letter to send them so you can just copy and paste, and then the sample presentation. So we put together, it's about an hour and a half presentation slide for you with key talking points, with multimedia, with graphics, with videos, as well as examples of where you could look up your own data for uh, relevant to your school district, relevant to your county, relevant to your state to personalize that presentation. We also drafted a sample press release for you to use. And then a meeting group and guide just to help keep that initial stakeholder meeting flowing, build that agenda, and then also how to continue meeting with critical stakeholders um, monthly or quarterly. On step three, to create that notification flow, we drafted some sample options uh, for police and for schools, and then using um, Handle With Care's memorandum of understandings between them, which are optional. So this kind of, we provide examples to show you how other districts, how other schools are doing it, how they're partnering, what it looks like for them. Some prefer to get the notification through text message, some law enforcement prefer to go through dispatch who can then email it to the schools and then within the schools, how they might triage it from say an attendance director to teachers to nurses or however they see fit. We provide a couple examples to help you decide how to do that in your community. And this is an example of the flow chart, which kind of walks through when police are on the scene, when they send that notification to the district and then how teaching staff and personnel are alerted, and then some trauma-sensitive support, um, how they can react. And step four is um, implementing the program. So this is kind of once everyone's decided, yes, this is important, this is what we want it to look like in our community, then it begins training within law enforcement and training within schools. Um, or this is early care providers or early care settings as well. So there are videos that Handle With Care has created, the book report, the free books and free online book study presentations that Andrea mentioned, um, a guide to the trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy for mental health care. And so we provide links to all these and additional resources to start building that trauma-informed workforce into being trauma sensitive and ultimately trauma responsive. And then that last step is promoting the program, is raising awareness. Uh, so we've got another sample press release uh, to announce the launching of the program once it's gotten going, as well as the social media sharing guide and graphics, which could be used along the way throughout this process. Um, and this is kind of a quick example of say some social media messages and how you can personalize them for your community um, edit them however you feel is more, um, more, have more of an impact to raise awareness about the need for the program or to celebrate the development and implementation of the program. So I wanted to open this webinar up now to questions or thoughts. Uh, please feel free to type them into the comment box below. We've got Diana here, who's been in the schools on the ground doing this program, and like she kind of mentioned, 
in her school district, these were newer conversations, whereas in other school districts, maybe they'd been talking about the need for trauma-informed workforce and developing the trauma-sensitive supports. But in her campus it was, or her district, it was, it was pretty new and with a lot of new ideas, can be resistant and how she got through that. So please feel free to um, ask any questions. And we also have Andrea Dar on the line still. So please, um, yeah, ask her any questions about the history of Handle With Care, how they've done it statewide in West Virginia. Um, but we can kind of, and then we'll keep this open for thoughts and questions. And then this is the link to the action pack. So it's free. It is, we launched it just today. Um, you can download it and then feel free to take any components of this action pack to use. Feel free to edit or tailor whatever you think is needed uh, to strengthen that conversation and to kind of build the case. Um, so let's see, I don't know, Andrea, did you, was there anything else you wanted to mention? Uh, yeah. Just a couple of things, and I just downloaded the action pack. It looks fabulous. <laughs> it looks wonderful. You've done a great job. A couple of things I forgot to mention. Um, on the kids' side, we also include child care serving agencies. The younger that child is, the more lethal that environment can be. So we, anywhere a child is in care, we like to send a handle with care notice. Also, it's not just law enforcement sending the handle with care notice. Fire departments are, EMS are. In West Virginia, we've, uh, we're, we are expanding to EMS because of all the overdoses that the um, children are witnessing and they come to school the next day. So I just want to make sure that we include all first responders. All right. Yes. Yeah. Fire department. And then, uh, like you said, also early care providers. So this, this is not limited to K through 12. This is for, for preschool and in the early care setting. It is. And one, there, there are a couple of things you have to remember when you implement this. It has to be easy to send the notice, okay? It has to be easy. Law enforcement, um, their, their jobs are much, all of our jobs are very different, but they go from scene to scene to scene. So we have to make it as easy as possible. I love, Diana, that y'all are going through dispatch. About half of our counties in West Virginia use dispatch, um, either as their primary way or a backup way. So we're trying to get it so everyone can remember, if you're not sure of how to send that notice in your area, you can always call dispatch if they can get on board. Yeah. And those are conversations you had with Officer Green early on too, right? Was keeping it easy. Keeping it easy. And that was the most critical component for law enforcement, for our first responders was keeping it easy, as well as the school district, because we're bombarded with so many emails and notifications that we wanted to just, just keep it easy, simple, um, and not overload our teachers as well. Um, so definitely that's a critical point. I'm glad you mentioned that, Andrea, and stressed that. And all they need to get is name, age, and school they go to. That's all we're asking law enforcement to get, name, age, and school that child goes to. And then develop that system within your county, how to get that notice over to the contact, the, the lead handle with care role in that school system before the start of the next school day. If you can't get it before the start of the next school day, get it as soon as you can. Over the summer, sure. keep those notices coming in and uh, the principal or whoever the contact is can just go to the teacher when school starts and say, you need to know we've had some handle with cares coming in on this child. Please handle this child with care. Yeah. And I, I guess one of the differences is, so in your district, it is a larger district, so you do have dispatch 24 hours, right? Correct. But one of the other campuses or districts that piloted it here, it is a smaller campus, and so they, they don't have dispatch 24 hours. So that next morning, it's, it's kind of on some administration to check and then distribute that first thing in the morning. And then they may be missing out over the summer Correct. So we're, we're trying to come together and to see what is the best way to address the notifications that come in over the summer, because we don't want them to stop coming in. And one of the things that Andrea said was, um, with us, the Child Protective Services, we are bringing them to the table, uh, but in our sense, they're not getting the notifications. Ours is more of, 
once the child, the family's been displaced due to a fire or um, a handle with care notification, then trying to keep them at the same school and where they have a support system with their friends and their teachers, and then utilize the McKinney Vento services to better serve the, the students and the family. So that's how they're coming to the table with us at this point. Another point I'd like to make is, um, is, is a lot of, don't make this whole thing harder than it has to be. It's really simple. The program is very simple and sometimes we, we make it too hard. For instance, one thing I just recently figured out in the county was law enforcement didn't realize that they should be sending, just, just send a notice on the kids you encounter. Law enforcement thinks it has to be a really big deal. They deal with so much uh, trauma in their work but we we often forget a little deal can be a big deal to a little kid you know and so we're just sending the notices on every on everyone one of my favorite quotes that i've run into recently is when little people are overwhelmed by big emotions it's our job to share our calm not join their chaos and if we can all remember that whether you're a first responder or a teacher or whoever you are if a child is upset if a child is traumatized Stay as calm as you can and let that child lean into you. That's one of the best things you can do for them. They're looking for safety, they're looking for predictability, and they're looking for someone that they can trust and lean on. Yeah, I, yeah, I love that quote. That is. And I, I love, too, that helps kind of elevate the importance that it, it's not, we're not expecting law enforcement to be the judge of severity either. It, to really make it more simple for them is just send one on every kid and then leave it to teachers and school administrators to have eyes on that kid to then determine. So we're also not asking teachers to become psychologists or counselors, but instead it's that eyes on and being more proactive rather than reactive. So maybe instead of sending a child with an outburst for discipline, instead sending them to the counselor for support or to the nurse for some sleep. Correct. Yeah. And also know that the information, the child's name and school is self-reported. So the officer is getting it from the parent or the children themselves and keeping in mind that the children may be traumatized and may be emotionally upset. And um, so they may not give the accurate information, for example, um, if they tend to go by a uh, mom's last name, but the campus has them by a different last name, those are some of the challenges that we've experienced, but we do our best to collaborate with the officers and narrow it down and to properly identify the student and the family. Um, I'm not sure how that works on your end, Andrea, but I know with us it's self-reported. It is, it's self-report on our end, exactly. Yeah. So it looks like we don't have any questions or comments. Um, I want to thank Andrea again, um, everything that they've done through the West Virginia Center for Children's Justice and this Handle With Care program, um, everything Diana has done to bring this to San Antonio with it being piloted first uh, just this spring and now being expanded across the city and the county. Uh, this is really incredible. And visit our website to download this action pack to help bring this to your community. And as you go along the way, if you come up against any roadblocks or you need additional resources or support tailoring any of the content, feel free to reach out to us, um, Amanda Merck at Salute America, and we can help you do that. So again, that action pack, you can download it at that salute.to slash handle with care, um, completely free and you can check out our website for additional resources and stories like the case study I mentioned on Diana and everything that they've done to bring this to San Antonio. Um, thank you so much again, Andrea. And she is here to support if you need, um, have additional questions on say, getting the word out to decision makers, starting that stakeholder meeting. Um, she has generously offered to help you know, hold hands for anyone interested in bringing this to their community because it has had such a great positive impact on students, 
and really not only students, but uh, adults within these campuses too, and the staff that realize that maybe they need some uh, support in their own life as well. Andrea has been super supportive and very uh, instrumental in helping us launch it in San Antonio. So definitely reach out. Um, and she's always there, you know, free of service to help to all of us that are in need or questions of any sort. My contact information is on our website, handlewithcarewv.org. Go up to the top right and you'll see contact information and feel free to call me. I'm a little slow in getting back those calls and emails, but I try to keep up with it as much as possible. And to everyone watching the webinar, just in summary for Handle With Care, it identifies the children most at risk. If law enforcement is there and there are children present, those are the children most at risk. It provides teachers with a heads up so they can be proactive instead of reactive. It connects children with much needed mental health services because we're putting those services on site at the school. It strengthens and improves relationships in the community because we're all doing our part and passing it off. You know, everyone's got a role to play with this child. And if we all do this and we, we got it, try to get it right, it just improves the lives of these children academically, socially, emotionally, and behaviorally. Handle with Care does that it's because we want to see children succeed every day. So if we can get them through the day, get them through the week, get them through the month, get them through the year, and get them to graduate from, from high school, that's their best shot in life is to graduate from high school. And that's what Handle with Care is all about. Amanda, mm -hmm. thank you so much for putting together this action pack. It is, I can't wait to go through the whole thing. It looks fabulous. So thank you all. If you have any questions, please call. Absolutely. Yes, thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.